Welcome back to the Crochet Crowd. So it's my friends over at Yarnspirations.com. I'm your host Mikey. Today we're going to do the dip edge crochet basket. Now this is a really neat idea and we're gonna be using two strands at one time but oh, oh it says that there's three balls of one color, one ball of another and if you're using two strands at the same time how is there an odd number of balls? So let's just quickly talk about that and ways to be able to get around that as well as you can make this any height that you want to. So I'm gonna be covering the handles today as well with you and also get yourself started. So in the instructions you can see that the main color the brocade has three balls. So you have a choice. When you have your yarn, let me just zoom right back out and you have your yarn and you're going to grab from the center. If there's three balls you wanna just grab two balls and just use the center of each of those balls that will give you your double thickness. But you will notice that there's said three balls. So once you uh, use up the first two balls what you can do on the third ball is grab the outside and the inside like this and just use them together to double strand. So that's how it's getting that, that number. So as we get started today we're going to be starting off at the bottom and working our way out. And once we get to the certain amount of inches we're gonna be continuing in this manner until there's eight single crochets evenly around the next five rounds. So what we need to do is that we need to keep increasing after the eighth round. So you see that there's 64 stitches but we need to get to 104 stitches. So that's something that we're gonna have to figure out. So I'll have that detail for you a little bit later in this tutorial. So we're gonna work our way out and then once you're happy with the diameter of it diameter you're gonna work in the next round and then you're going to work in the back loops in order to do that and that will create the natural bend at the bottom of the basket that you see and then it will just jet out ever so nicely to give you a nice rounded edge and then you're gonna work your way up the side. So let's get ourselves started. You're gonna hold the two strands together. This is like a marling technique and if you, you can use two different strands like completely different colors if you want but if you are gonna use the same color I recommend that you probably just have them start at a different spot so they're, they're not equally uh, matching each other and that's just kind of an idea. So you can decide to do that for yourself. So we're going to then just create a slip knot using both together. We're gonna use a 10 millimeter size N as in Nancy crochet hook today and we're gonna go on here. It does say M as in Michael. Those hooks are hard to find so just up increase to a size N as in Nancy. So once that's on there I want you to um, place in and uh, chain two. And you're gonna know this, this is gonna be really thick which is what you're looking for. So in the first round let's begin. We are going to put eight single crochets in the first one like in the first chain. So let's just count those out together. So we're gonna say one and two. Getting started is always the hardest. So two. Make sure the tension is coming from the ball quite nicely too. So three. And noticing that I'm going over the straggler as well. So we're gonna say four. Six. I'm gonna move the straggler out of the way. Seven and eight. So eight is gonna get you all the way around. It's really quite, it's almost like a poof, a makeup poof already. It's so big. So that's eight. Let, let's verify. So you're just gonna count back. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. And on the eighth one back, that's the first one that you're going to apply your slip stitch to. Okay, so pull through and through like that. So if you were going over the straggler, let's get rid of that now. It's out of your hair and let's move on to round number two next. Let's move on to round number two. You're going to chain up one and in the same space that you have for the join I want you to put in two single crochets. So we're gonna say one and two and then you're gonna go into the next one and then put two into that one and so you're gonna do all eight single crochet stitches around. You put two into each and then you'll end up with 16 single crochets and then we'll just meet you at the end of this round. So put two single crochets in each stitch all the way around. So I'm coming out around you should see eight groups of two stitches and then you're just gonna slip stitch to the very first one. And then we're gonna start 
the third round. So I'm just checking it off on my list as I go. So we're now going to start with our increases. We have to continually get bigger and the increase is gonna be very easy as we're doing that. So as we begin to go long, we're just going to chain up one and you're gonna put one single crochet in the first one. Sorry, two single crochets in the first one. And then the next stitch is gonna be one single crochet by itself. Okay, so here's the repeat for this pattern, round number three. It's gonna be two into the first one. So one and two and then one into the next one and you're gonna keep doing that all the way around. See me at the end of this round. This is round number three. Coming up to the end of round number three, the one single crochet by itself should be the last one. So that will help you to know that. Okay, so let's um, slip stitch and move on to number four. So we're now gonna increase our, our stitches in between the increased stitches. <laughs> Say that ten times fast. So we're gonna do number four. So we're gonna chain up one and we're gonna do two single crochets in the first one and so we're gonna get bigger now. So the next two in a row are each gonna be a single crochet. Okay, so last time it was only one, this time it's two because you're getting bigger. So then the next one, there's two single crochets in that next one and then the next two are one single crochet by itself. Please do that all the way around. This is round number four. Okay, and coming up to the end of round number four, so the last two are singles by themselves and then you're just gonna slip stitch. It's always a good indication you know you're on the right path. So let's move on, round number five. Chain up one, two singles in that first one, you know it. And then how many are gonna be by itself as we're doing an increase? If you said three, go grab yourself some cookies. So three by itself, so one, two, three. So again the repeat is two into the next one. So one and two and then three by itself. So one, two and three. Please do this for round number five. Coming up to the end of round number five, the three are in there by themselves before I'm doing the joining. And let's move on to round number six. So round number six, chain up one and then you were just gonna put in then two into the first one and in round number six there's going to be four by itself. I think you're getting it by this point so just put the next four by itself and then two into the next four by itself and two into the next. Please do this, round number six. Coming up to the end of round number six, I'm just going to join it. So you can see I'm getting a little bit less with my instructions as far as like you know telling you exactly what to do as far as like showing you because it's just a repeat of an increase. So round number seven, just chain up one and you're going to put two into the first one. So one and two and then round number seven has five in a row that it's by itself. So then two and five, two and five. Let's do this, round number seven. So I've come all the way back around. This is round number seven and I'm just gonna slip stitch to the beginning and then move on to round number eight. So just slip stitch, sorry. And number eight. We're going to chain up one and you're going to put two into the first one. So we know how to do that. And number eight, there's now gonna be six in a row by itself and then two, six and then two. Please do this all the way for round number eight. I'm coming up to the end of round number eight. So I'm just gonna slip stitch to the beginning. So it says in the pattern, continuous, continue in this manner increasing eight single crochets evenly around the next five rounds. So let's just cover what that is. So grab a pen and paper just in case you want it and just watch what I'm about to do. So the designers are essentially telling us to increase for the next five rounds. So round number nine, you're gonna have seven single crochets and then an increase. Round number 10, eight single crochets and then an increase. 11 is nine, 12 is 10 and 13 here gives you 11 increases. And so with those five then that gets you to the final number that you need before you continue into the next round. If you would like to change the size of this basket in any way you can keep going if you want to or just end it earlier and it pretty much doesn't matter because we're just gonna go our, our way all the way around. The only difference that it would matter is that the handles are marked at a different spot. So you might wanna keep an eye on that for the future but honestly you can probably just look over top and just manually just eye it out too. So let's do the rounds number nine, 10, 11, 12, and 13 on your own and just uh, look at the increase, put me on pause and then I'm going to check it off as I complete my list and then I'll get ready and we'll start the next round together. For those that are now ready to go on, so we're gonna now work on the next round in the instructions. 
So you'll have 104 single crochets. If you did change the size you'll have something else. So we're going to begin and we're gonna chain up one and in the back loop only, I know it's kinda hard to see cause it's variegated but it's there and if you look at it really carefully when you go underneath the stitches you see that there's, there's one set of loops. So sorry one set and then two. So you wanna go in the back loop only. So starting in the very first one you wanna go into the back loop. So you're only getting the back loop only. So starting in the back loops you're just gonna go one single crochet in each. One, that first one was kinda hard for me to find but once I got the first one then they pretty much open up. You can kinda see it's a little bit easier to go. And this is gonna create a line that will make it bendable at the base of the basket. So you're just gonna go all the way around please and just do one single crochet in the back loops and I'll see you at the end of this round. So I'm just coming up all the way back around and I'm just doing the back loops only and then I'm just going to slip stitch to the regular stitch. So now for the eight inches, okay so eight inches up, so consider this a line. So it will naturally wanna bend with this line. So eight inches up you're going to continue to use this color. Then we're going to switch and do a solid color which makes it the dip edge uh, idea. So the next round all we're just going to do and all the way to eight inches including all the sections for the dipped edge. There is a exception with the handle and I'll get there in just a moment but what all you're just gonna do is just, just chain up one and going into the regular stitch work now just apply one single crochet. So when I come back I'm just gonna come back all the way around in the same round. I'll show you how to do the, the regular color and then I'm gonna show you how to do the handle. The handle actually has a hole in the project uh, for both sides of the handle and I'll be showing you that when we come back. So go all the way around and go all the way to eight inches and then change your color. I'll show you how to do the change of the color and then we'll continue from that point. So just coming all the way back around. So let's just pretend, hopefully you like pretending today. So I'm gonna slip stitch to the very beginning to where we had started. So let's pretend that I have eight inches done from this line here. This was where the bend was. It will take several rounds before you'll start really seeing that curve in order to get to the bottom of the bowl. So if it's not curving up right away for you, don't panic, it will. So the only difference, reason why it wouldn't be is if you're adding a stitch here. So make sure that you are finishing. So once you get your eight inches done, we're gonna be ending this color and then we're gonna be bringing on the solid color which makes it the dipped edge crochet plus, uh, <laughs> blanket. Did I just squeak <laughs> puberty all over again my friends. So we're gonna totally just pull through and you wanna weave in these strands here and you wanna uh, crochet right over them to trap them into position when you're doing this. So we're gonna move on to the next color and the next color what we need to do is two rounds of it first and then we're gonna be making some whole spaces then for the, uh, the handles. If you don't want handles then just uh, blast your way all the way to the top. Enjoy, have a great day and if you'd like to do the handles just continue to stick with me and we'll continue that. So let's uh, just get another color and we're gonna start right where we finished off. Now for transparency I'm just using one ball. I'm using the outside <laughs> I don't know why I put in my hand. I'm using the outside and then I'm using the inside. So I'm using the outside first and then the inside of the ball. So the ones coming out the in of each. So you may want to just release some yarn off the outside. It makes it a little bit easier and you're gonna hold two strands together to get that solid color. So you want to uh, just create a slip knot to begin and you wanna go right where you finished off and put that slip knot on. So just pull things nice and tight and pull through and then chain one and then single crochet in the same one that you did the join. Go right up over top of that straggler to trap it in and you wanna do two rounds of this color and I will do that just to make you happy today and then I'm gonna show you how to do the handle section next. So just do two rounds of this color and meet me here in just a moment. So now have two rows of the new color. So you have eight inches, pretend, and then you have two uh, rounds of this. And now we're gonna do the handles. The neat way to do this one, if it were me and I were you, is that I get a little bit paranoid on the, on the counts. So what I would like to do is that just mark it with a stitch marker, in this case just spare yarn. And I wanna work my way across the piece. Okay, so I'm looking at the camera monitor in front of me here to get that middle. So I just wanna get the middles of where I think the handle should be. So instead of counting, so ignore the counting if you're gonna do this and just do this. 
So I'm just placing this marker here so I can see here. Okay, so that's about equal. So what I want to do is that I want to count, so grab some more stitch markers, so two more. So now that the middle one is in, I want to be able to locate where the handle is going to be. So let's just say that the one here is, we're gonna count out. So let's just count out starting at that one. So one, two, three, four. Okay, and so mark it to the fifth one. And now once you have that one done, count back so that you have eight empty stitches. So one, starting at that same one. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven and eight. And so then that will be what we're going to be jumping over. And what I wanted to do is I wanna do the same thing with the other side. But noticing that it's not quite in the halfway point because it's an even number, not an odd. So starting in the next one, just now do the opposite. So how we counted this way, we're gonna count this way. So if you look at this one, we went one, two, three, four, and put it in the fifth. So we're gonna start with this one. So one, two, three, four, and put it in the fifth. And then we're gonna count back from that one. So we're gonna go starting in that one. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. And there is that one. And the reason why we're doing this is that we need to leave a hole for the, the handle. And so you can see, just adjust it a bit, it's equal. So you can take out the middle one there. So now that these are marked, we're going to skip the stitch right directly before it and skip the stitch directly after it. And we are just going to skip that so we end up with a hole here. And in the same one with this one. So we're gonna skip the one that is after it and the one that's before it. So we have to chain one in order to do the skipping. So as you're starting this round, you can just start as normal. So just chain up one and then just do one single crochet in each and I'll show you what to do when we get to the stitch marker just in case you're not clear. So my first stitch marker is coming up here. So I wanna skip the one that's right before it. So just going in here. And to skip that one, we're gonna chain one to jump over it and then just jump into the one that has the stitch marker. So you're gonna do all the ones in between the stitch markers. So do those. And then you're going to skip the one directly after the stitch marker. And make sure you chain one to go over top. So you could count like it suggests in the pattern, but chances are if you're reading the pattern, you're not following this tutorial for this tip. So it's kind of a neat way to be able to do it without a lot of hassle. So now that I've just done that one there, I want to be able to um, just chain one, skip over the stitch, and then just start in the next one and work my way back around to the beginning. So I'm just coming all the way back around to the very beginning. I got two more, two more rounds my friends, but I'm not gonna do them on camera with you. So you're just gonna go around, you're gonna chain up one and do one single crochet. Now when you get to the space, put in a single crochet right into that space and that will secure that in and you'll do that with the four spaces that you have. Go all the way around and then chain up one and do one single crochet all the way around and then that's good to go. We're going to cover the handles next but to finish off you want to cut both strands and if it were me and you weren't watching me, you're just gonna pull through and treat each strand separately. It's just easier to get onto your wool needle and so you just grab a needle and just stay to the inside of the work when you go to do this and you'll wanna do this with your handles as well. So you're just gonna just peel it back and just put it into the back section. Keep it in the same color of yarn and try not to get that needle so it pokes at the front. Just stay towards the back and you're gonna take your two strands and just run them through once and then just a slightly different path in the opposite direction for two. And finally third time is a charm just going a third time across. Now you're gonna do the same with the other one and then we're going to move on to show you how to do the handle. When I say we, I mean me, I don't even know why I do myself as plural. It's crazy. So let's uh, move on and I'm gonna hide this in and I will show you how to do the handles next. So let's review on how to do the handle. If you really looked at the photograph, you'll notice that the handle is like a round circle and it's going right through these holes. So in order to do that, you actually have to play with those holes as you're doing this. So let's just create an extra long tail just because you can. And what we can do 
is that we can just chain a total of 26. Okay, so just pulling it close and chain 26. So I'm keep, keeping the basket on the table because I'm gonna need it. So I'm just gonna go one, two, three. So what I wanna do now, now that I have 26, without really twisting it at all, just keep it kind of flat, just grabbing the back end of it. So right where you started. And I want you to feed that through to the outside. So pull that through. Now I want to, on the other side here, I want to feed it back in so it goes to the inside. So pull some chain work out. Again, make sure it's not twisting at all. And pulling it through. So when you go to join it, you want to just join with the beginning. And slip stitch. So you just have one more round to do. So this is uh, the first one and you're just gonna chain up one and you're just going to rotate around this. Now you'll notice that it wasn't tied at all to this project. So you're not gonna have to worry about um, trying to go up and through these loops. All you can just do then is just once you start doing it, just one single crochet in each of the chains and then you can just rotate the chain so you can have easier access to it. So just pulling it out one side and etc. And eventually the thicker chain will make its way through the hole. I think that's pretty self explanatory at this moment. So what I'll do is I'll do that off camera and just apply one single crochet in each of the chains and just keep rotating it until I'm all the way around. So I'm coming up all the way back around and just yap at you for a few moments. So I've never seen a basket have handles like this before. Always the baskets are kind of sewing on and I'm not really a fan of sewing on handles to a basket because people do put stuff in there that can weigh more. So I like the idea that this is actually a separate handle completely working through its holes. And when I get all the way around, I wanna make sure that this is not twisting in any kind of weird way. Unless that's what your goal is today. So you wanna be just mindful of that when you get all the way around. So just kind of follow the line as it comes around. And that's it. So you're gonna do both handles the same way. And once you're around to the outs uh, round, make sure there is no twist and then just slip stitch to the top of the first single crochet. And like how I showed you already with weaving it in the tails, that's how, what I would do. And uh, just use your tapestry needle and hide those in and you'd be good to go and you'd have a nice clean handle as you're doing this. So you pretty much with this tutorial you were able to uh, figure out how to customize. Let me just back you out a little bit. So boop, 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 boop. So you were able to customize with the, the size because of the way that I showed you and also you can just change anything that you want to really and uh, you can make it as high or as short as you want to. It's almost like a little tray at this moment. So it depends on your needs and then you end up with a nice handle at the end so then you can just uh, you know carry it around with you or just put it beside your sofa and it's now your new yarn basket. Whatever you wanna use today, that's awesome and this is a great project. So this is the Dipped Edge Crochet Basket by Yarnspirations.com. Please weave in all your ends and please enjoy and let us know how I did today. Have a good one and we'll see you again real soon. Bye-bye.